We light the Christ candle, remembering the star that led the wise men to the Christ child. May your light shine through us as a beacon of hope in our world. Amen. <coughs> Land is sacred and holy. Community is sacred and holy. Land and community are inextricably linked. We all know what it is like to go home that such an idea is tied to place and people. We also know that home can mean much more than one thing to us, with different feelings attached to each place that we call home. This land has been home to indigenous people for thousands of years. It is also home to many others, but for less time than that. We live here on land that has been home to indigenous people for thousands of years, and home to others for only a small fraction of those thousands of years. A treaty was signed between the ancient dwellers on this land and the more recently arrived people. That treaty defines both rights and responsibilities for all those who live here. We give thanks for the peaceful sharing of this land, the, the traditional land of the Mississauga Ojibwe territory of the Chippewa indigenous people. We promise to abide by the responsibilities laid out in the treaty which guides the relationship between all dwellers on this land. We acknowledge that we are treaty people as we live, work, play, and worship on this land. Good morning. Good morning. Today is January 8th, 2023. The second Sunday after Christmas and Epiphany Sunday. Welcome to St. John's United Church. We welcome those who visit us and watch with us together in person and online. We have fellowship right after this service in Chilton Hall. I have one announcement, Ken Pratt. Good morning and Happy New Year. Uh, at this time, we'd like to advise the congregation that Reverend Sung Min will be taking a sabbatical from March 1st to May 31st of this year, followed by his holiday time from June 1st to June 30th. During the time, the Faith Formation team will be arranging for pulpit supply and leading the worship services. They will keep you informed of their plans as they work their way through this process, but would appreciate your prayers, support, and of the congregation as they undertake the responsibility. If you have any questions or concerns, please share them with the members of the Faith Formation team, and I'll ask them to stand when I say their names so you can recognize them. Jackie Rudd, Bev Bailey, Pat Morrison, and Mary Gordon. So these are your Faith Formation team, uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. The pastoral care team, We'll also be aware of this, and Reverend Sung Min has arranged for ministerial coverage for emergency pastoral care. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Any other announcement? If not, I invite you to turn around and recognize who your neighbor is and say hello to each one of us.
Join me in call to worship. Come, meet the King born in a star. Come to worship Christ. Come, discover the one who emptied the temple. We come to raise the righteous flag to you. Come, experience the Prince of Peace hanging from a cross. We come to bear witness to the King of Opening prayer. God of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany, like the Magi from long ago, we come into this time of worship seeking the light of the world, your Son, Jesus. When I say the Magi, the of the Son, he used these words, nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your God. We do seek this beacon of hope, peace, joy, and love, a beacon we find in Jesus, a beacon to help us in the midst of chaos, despair, and tragedy. May help us, O God, to fill our souls with the light and love of Christ, so that we may carry this light and love. Our opening hymn from Voices United <coughs> number 82. The order of the song is first refrain, first one, two, refrain, first three, four, and finish with refrain. <coughs> Oh, sure. 
it's a children's time. Just, I don't think you are like to be called a child anymore, but you are the youngest one in this congregation this morning, so you don't mind to come forward? I need someone to talk with, so just come and... I know you are now taller than I, so... <laughs> so today is the Sunday called Epiphany. Do you have any idea the word Epiphany? Epiphany, okay, so I like to make it, you, you eat. Uh, epiphany is, literally means God reveals. Okay? God reveals through his son Jesus to this world, particularly 12 days after Christmas to these three gentlemen, the three wise men. So today is the 14th after Christmas, right? But yeah, 12 years after Christmas, we, we celebrate as Epiphany. So the question is, how the invisible God revealed God's self to us? Do you have any idea? I'd like you to be a little bit more serious. <laughs> Do you have any idea? How could God reveal God's self to us, to this world? Light. Through the scriptures. Anything else? I said a light. Light, yes. And there's many, many, you know, signs of epiphanies in our world. And I'd like to show you a play of one video clip and you might have some glimpse of Epiphany through this video clip. Wow, Mona, these stories, unbelievable. The historic blizzard bearing down. A little bit more, please. Wow, Mona, these stories, unbelievable. The historic blizzard bearing down, Alex and Andrea Campagna heard a knock at their door. They said, we're part of a tour group from South Korea and we have 10 people in our vehicle. And I said, get all of them inside our house right now. You'll never know the friendships you'll forge when you open that door. Okay, so it's, it is 10 minutes in our, our video clip, but the, the whole, it's, it's too much to play the whole this morning. So I'd like to just summarize what happened. Uh, 10 uh, people, Korean people from South Korea, they started their journey uh, from uh, Seattle, the Washington uh, state, just the, Christ, uh, the, the couple of days before Christmas in order to, to see Niagara Fall. But you know what happened two days before in, in that area, it's a severe thunderstorm, you know, blowing. So on their way to, the, when they closed the, to the, you know, the Niagara area, they couldn't move their car. So two of the, the 10 people just, just visit one, one family and to, to borrow uh, shovels. And then the couple in the house just invited them to come, it's too, too much. You can't stay, you can't you can survive. So all 10 Korean people were invited by the family and they stayed there for two nights. There's a complete stranger. And they, 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 they are foreigners from South Korea. And, and, and what happened next? There's a one, you know, Korean, you know, uh, K, Korean KFC, okay? Korean, Korean BBQ, which means Korean, you know, uh, kitchen, 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 not kitchen, chicken company. Uh, they, they offered this couple a one year free coupon available. Can you believe? 
So any of the 10 Koreans are related to the, uh, the Korean KFC. But when the company heard this great news, the welcoming strangers to an American house, they just gave the couple one year free coupon available. Yes? So for me, that's the one of great, you know, science of epiphany revealed to the world in this world. Isn't it great? Yes, yes indeed. So if you see any uh, strangers, oh, by the way, when these, you know, wise men visited Christ, the newborn child, they brought three gifts. Do you have any idea? One of them, coins? Gold. Yes. Uh, gold. Frankincense? Yes. What's the third one? Myrrh. The gold, what is gold? Why gold? Gold? Any idea why gold? Yes, he is born as the king of Israel. And, and, and then there's a hope. The people, when we have new king, we want the king last long to govern the, the kingdom. So the gold is the symbol of eternity. What about frankincense? Frankincense are little seed used in the temple in the ancient world. And then frankincense as a, as a seed represent divine spirit, the divinity. What about more? More is a perfume used for anointing the dead body. So it, it tells the destiny of Jesus who died for the sin of the world. So gold, I don't know which one is frankincense. Can you guess? Decoration team, which one is frankincense? You can't tell. Your choice. Okay, this is frankincense. The symbol of what? Divinity. So this one, the pink is? Uh, gold is this one. Yeah, the, the pink is more. Yeah, it's a symbol of Jesus' destiny. Dying for us on the cross. Okay, thank you for joining us. We have a practice for the scripture reading. The reading this morning comes from the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, <clears throat> behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, 
he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what sign thou appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may also worship him. And when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in the dream that they should not return to the earth, they departed into their own country in another way.
I'd like to recognize Anne Hargrove, retired minister from Trinity Centennial United Church, now here with us. We welcome you. So are you joining us from now on? <laughs> I wonder what they saw that first night. What was it that motivated them to pack and begin a journey to who knew where? <coughs> Something has been revealed to them. What was it? Was it in the sky? in their mind or in their heart. We don't have much information about the three the wise men and their journey. Saint Matthew says they from they came from the east. Some have speculated they were from Persia, the present Iran. We like to think that there were three of them. But, the, but St. Matthew doesn't give any information about the number. The number has varied throughout the church history. Two, three, four, six, eight, and even 12. We call them Casper, Mad Choir, and Belstasa. But these names didn't come out until the 7th century. What about the star? It has been viewed as a supernatural phenomenon a regular star, a comet, sometimes as a, a constellation, or a grouping of a planet. This anonymity and lack of historical information is a reminder that this story, the Epiphany journey, it's not just the wise man's journey. It is everyone's journey. The truth of sacred scripture is never limited to or contained in only in the past. I don't know what was in the sky, what they saw that first night. I don't know what was in their mind, in their heart, what they felt or dreamed of or longed for. But I do know that there have been times when we each have experienced epiphany. Times when our night nice sky has, lit, has been lit brightly. Times when our minds have been illumined. Times when our hearts have been enlightened. Those times have revealed to us a life and world larger than before. They have been moments that gave us the courage to travel beyond the boundary and border that usually circumscribe our lives. Epiphany 
at those times when something calls us and moves us to a new place and we see God's face in a new way. I imagine some of a wise man's disappointment. They took a long journey to see, to worship the newborn king of Israel. So they went to the city of Jerusalem, the capital city of Judea, where God's temple was. But they were directed to go to a little town named Bethlehem. And there, they entered the house. Okay? Did you hear that paragraph when Bob read it this morning? They entered the house. not enter the stable, right? They enter the house. If you go to, you know, Luke's gospel, you see shepherd visited the newborn child and his family. Where? The stable. But these wise men enter the house. There they knelt down and worshiped him and presented the, the gifts they have prepared for the child. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The symbol of eternity, the symbol of divinity, and his death, the symbol of his death on the cross. And that is what happened to the wise men. Something stirred within them to wonder and to imagine and that their lives were part of a larger story. Could it be that the one who created life hung the stars in the sky, noticed them, knew them, lived within them, and was calling them? Could it be that the light, they saw the night, It's a reminder of divine light that burned within them as well as burns within each one of us. To seriously consider these questions is to begin the journey. That journey took the wise man to the house. A very ordinary place where they found the answer to their question in the arms of his mother Mary. We may travel a different route than this wise man did, but the answer would be the same. And our belief would be the same. The one who created life, who hung the stars in the sky, notices us, knows us, lives within us, and calls us. You are my son, and you are my daughter. With you, I'm well pleased. God is continually revealing ourself in humanity. 
in the flesh, in the ordinary life, in the ordinary relationships we may and have. After my reflection about the presentation of the Lord in the temple before Simeon, and my comparison it with my daughter's birth last Sunday, a, a, young, a lady came up to me and said, Sangmin, if you had a grandchild, you may have a deeper feeling of divine love. I didn't tell you who she was. And I answered her, thank you. Hope to have it soon. <laughs> yes, because I met my daughter yesterday and, and she told me that uh, she, uh, she is going to get married on this year, I mean, I don't know when. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. December 16th, 2023. So I hope I have some kind of, you know, deeper feeling of divine love in the near future. Yes, it is right. It was the day that I bathed my first child. I saw the beauty of creation and the love of the Creator. It was the day that you said to your partner, I love you. You knew that it was about just more than love or romance or a physical attraction. It was the moment that you all of a sudden realized that your life was sacred, holy, and acceptable to God. It was the time that you kept vigil at the bedside of the one who was dying and experienced the joy and conviction that death is not the end. These are our stories, our stories of epiphany that ever change who we are, how we live, and the road we travel. They are moments of ordinary, everyday life in which divinity is revealed in humanity and we see God's glory face to face in our daily life and in our relationships. Amen and amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of the Epiphany, long ago we are told, sages brought gift to the child Christ, gold to crown him sovereign forever, frankincense to mark him as a deity to be praised, and more to foreshadow suffering and death for the sin of the world. What gifts are offered to us this epiphany? Could they include the riches of learning and discovery as we ex explore scripture? Perhaps we will unwrap a fragrant offering of new insights of self-awareness 
and he forgives that you offer us at this time seems bitter. May we find the sweetness that is present somewhere in whatever you give us. At this time, we pray to you to offer us the gift of comfort and healing, particularly to those in hospital, shut-ins, and at home bed. We pray for those who have been suffering from COVID-19. People in the war-torn area, particularly people in Ukraine, women who fight for their basic human rights in Iran, children and young women who were prohibited to access any education in Afghanistan, people suffering from natural disaster in the United States of America, Canadians stranded in Mexico. We also pray for those wandering in the streets, in towns and cities with no shelter or proper place to stay and live. May we never cease praising you for the greatest gift of all, your incarnation in Jesus, the one who shows us how to live fully in you. We pray this in the name of that most precious gift who taught us to say, and this time we sing it together. As we are blessed by the God of wonder and love, let us share the gifts we have received in blessing to others. Let us commit ourselves to acts of love as we continue to worship God through the presentation of our offering. Offering is now being received.
Scripture confirms that we further your kingdom when we show kindness and compassion to another person. We pray in Jesus' life and teaching may always be our example for sharing intentionally our talents, prayers, time, and offerings. We humbly give this offering as an expression of our faith. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is I Am the Light of the World in our Hymn of Voices United, number 87. We seek your glory, the richness that transforms redness into color and brightens our dullness with vibrant light. Your wonder and joy, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> your wonder and joy at the heart of all life. God of Moore, we cry out to you in our suffering, the pain of all our rejections and bereavements, our fearful despair and undeserved suffering, our rage at continuing injustice.
some blessing, go now in peace.